So there were a couple of videos came out in the past uh, week, two weeks, that were talking about 7 Remington Mag versus 7 PRC. The big takeaway that I got from all of that is that if we're willing to toss Sammy out the window, then the sky's the limit as far as, you know, velocity goes. Anyway, one of the things that I came across in the comments and I responded to some people was some discussion about case capacities because one of the critical pieces of doing reloading whenever you're trying to use a tool like um, Quick Load or Gordon's reloading tool is that your case capacity can affect the pressures in your rifle. And so there was a gentleman that was talking about how he you know, got custom dies made to fit his chamber so that his brass was as large as possible, getting more case volume. And the thing about that is, is that it depends on what you're doing, whether or not that makes any sense to do. And so this is going to be a quick video about measuring case capacity. And there are a couple reasons why you might want to measure case capacity. The first one is for sorting to make sure that your brass is all as similar as possible. And for that purpose, I think it makes the most sense to use cases that have been fired and resized because that is probably going to be the most uniform external dimensions possible. And so that will constrain things so that whenever you measure the internal volume, it will give you the most accurate representation about the consistency of your brass. So that's all I'm going to say about that because this video is actually not that concerned with sorting brass by capacity for accuracy or consistency purposes. What I'm more thinking about is measuring your case capacity when it comes to using one of those simulation tools like Gordon's reloading tool or quick load to estimate the pressures in your chamber. Whenever you're setting those tools up, it has a place where you can enter case capacity. And a variation of a couple of grains on that input can cause variation of thousands of pounds in pressure on the output. And so I just wanted to point out that whenever you're doing that for that purpose, you want to use fired brass that has not been resized. And the reason is, is that the internal volume of your brass is different during firing than it is when it's new or when it's been resized. Your brass is going to serve as a pressure bladder within your chamber. And during that firing, it expands. That's part of the reason why we have to resize it in the first place. And so it's important to understand that regardless of how big your brass is after sizing, during firing, it's actually the chamber itself that is going to limit the internal volume. And so to accurately measure the volume for pressure purposes, you want to measure the volume during the firing process. Well, you can't do that. The closest you can get is, well, how big is the brass after firing? And that will give you the most accurate measurement of the internal volume of your brass and within your chamber during firing. The fire brass is going to be more accurate representation of the true volume of your chamber. Now, it's still going to be a lower bound. It's not going to be perfect. And the reason for that is the brass is still going to have some spring back. Even if you anneal, you only anneal kind of the top portion. You're not supposed to anneal down here. So this portion is going to remain in a harder state and it's going to spring back more. Now, whatever you're subjecting this stuff to 55 to 65,000 PSI, uh, it doesn't really matter. The whole thing's going to expand. So you're not going to get a perfect representation with your fire brass, but it is going to be closer. That also means that doing any sort of special process with your resizing dies to make your brass larger won't actually help your pressures at all because your brass, no matter what your size of your brass going into the chamber is, during firing, that sucker is going to balloon out and fill your chamber. And again, it doesn't matter if it was bigger or smaller going in, that may affect your powder capacity and whether or not you're getting, you know, like compressed charges or something, but it's not going to affect the pressure during firing. That's going to be limited by the actual thickness of the walls of your brass and your chamber dimensions, not your size. 
So anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you got any questions, feedback, comments, as always, feel free to leave them down below.